Hello, this is Trina from John's Furniture Repair and I'm really glad that you're here today because I have lots of stuff to say. Um, some interesting things on the horizon. We're gonna do a little repair today and I'm gonna give you some news. So today I've got this beautiful walnut uh, vanity door that a uh, hinge mount broke out of and we're going to be doing a little repair on the hinge mount. we got a big splinter here and we're going to glue that back in and this is a simple repair but a lot of people get it wrong so let me show you exactly how to get a very good seamless repair on something like this. Okay so this uh, repair happened because of a style of European hinge and this style actually when you install it you click it down and it will dig into the side of the wood now if you can see on the inside of this that's where it digs into there is only about a quarter of an inch maybe less between that and the edge of this piece of wood as well it's routered out or grooved out to fit this panel so when the European hinge pops in here and digs in, there isn't a lot of chance for that piece of wood to last. So it did break eventually. And there's a lot of different hinges, European hinge styles that um, don't do that. You just screw them into where they go. Um, the other thing is these screws on this type of hinge are really close to the inside edge of this wood as well. But we're not gonna change the hinges, we're just gonna fix it try to give it a little bit of support and hopefully it doesn't happen again. Sometimes we can't change the design of the, the system. So I'm basically just going to be getting some glue into these little cracks everywhere and squishing it down on that one. But this one, like I said, has got a really big chip right out of the side here because it did the same thing gouged into the end here but when it had a little bit of pressure and pull out maybe the screws came loose it just decided to take that whole chunk of wood with it thankfully we have the piece of wood so we can glue it back in there but I'm really trying to figure out a way to strengthen uh, the hinge mount on this whole situation if you have good ideas please share them in the comments below and I'll definitely listen to them I really appreciate my um, in the business comments, people who've done this for many years and they give me good ideas. Um, so the only problem with this splinter here is that although it fills the top center, there's a big chunk of it missing here and that's right where the screw goes in. So there's really nothing to hold that screw. So you may have guessed it, we're gonna use epoxy to do these repairs and I'm gonna actually refill the screw holes and re-drill them. Um, just to give everything a little bit of extra hold. So I'm gonna go mix up a batch of that. Okay, here at my little messy workbench, I got a bunch of these silicone muffin cups that I cut up into in individual um, little cups so I can just squish the glue out of it after it's all dry and I can use it again. Finally found those somewhere. And yeah, the bottom's round, which is kind of annoying, but I just stick it in one of these cups and it works for now. Maybe I'll make a stand. Maybe one of my 3D printer guys out there can make me a stand. Anyways, um, so this is the West system that I'm using, the epoxy here. And I've got the 105 epoxy resin and the 205 hardener, which is the fast hardener. Uh, I don't always use the fast hardener, but they didn't have the other one, so I just bought this one and it can work faster, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of annoying because it does go hard a little bit faster. But I'm going to mix a half of... A batch and these are metered pumps so one to one pump so I'm just gonna do half of each pump into my little cup here so about half of that and about half of that and I do have really faint pencil marks where half actually is if you're wondering on those so then I'll just take one of my sticks here and mix it up really good And I collect um, sawdust from my sanders and stuff, really fine sawdust without big chunks in it. And this is what I use as a free thickener. So I'll just put in 
that'll be good. And you can buy the silicone hardeners for this stuff, the silica hardener, sorry. And it works great too, and it doesn't change the color of the epoxy as much as the sawdust, but sometimes you want that. You can keep different colors of sawdust and adjust the actual color of the epoxy, which this color actually works pretty good. This is usually the color I get with a mixture of all the different woods I sand in the shop, nice dark brown. That'll work just fine here. Now, before you get gluing up stuff like this, these two things are the key to a good, nice flush um, repair when you have a piece. And that is pressure and surface. You wanna make sure that you have a nice flat surface that when you put pressure down, it's gonna completely compress that piece back into the hole. Now, you don't know if some of these fibers changed. You can always do a dry fit. That helps as well to see you know, how everything's fitting. And it's fitting okay, but if I didn't have enough pressure, I would end up with a bunch of ridges all along here to have to sand this whole piece here and refinish. So you really need to be able to compress that back into the space and uh, get it lined up. And I will slide it into place as much as possible to get the better fit there, but it's gonna need pressure. So you need a good amount of, and these aren't actually that flat. I might pick up something else to put on here but you need good clamps. These can put a lot more pressure on than my quick grip clamp. These guys, or even bigger ones, um, I can just really screw down this piece and really compress those fibers a lot more than I can with this. So choosing the, the right clamp to compress something is important as well, get enough pressure on there. Okay, so I've got two nice smooth flat blocks that will really mate with the surface nicely. So next thing is protecting these from actually gluing them to the cabinet door. I don't want that. You can cover them with like a plastic tape here or just with a painter's tape. Not everybody has plastic tape on hand, but it's not hard to find. So just going to put that on there so that the glue won't stick. It doesn't stick to the tape. There we go. And another thing I forgot to mention was choose a block that is concentrated on the space that you are compressing. If you get a block that's really big, you might accidentally put more pressure here than here. You wanna make sure that your pressure is concentrated to where you're repairing. All right, so now that we've got our clamps here, we've got our glue mixed, we've got our blocks ready, we are ready to go. So we're just going to overfill especially here where there is a giant void underneath. And I'm gonna get my small putty knife and just work. Now the only downside to this is it will get into that panel groove here. So it will stick the panel right here on this side. And you don't want that. Um, but we're hoping that the other side is free and moving so that we don't have to worry about uh, the panel expansion cracking somewhere. If it was glued on both sides, then for sure we would have issues, but hoping it is okay. And these are not new cabinets either. And speaking of that, while I get this glue all in everywhere, um, I'll show you a couple pictures of this customer's home. We actually refinished her entire kitchen and this vanity, which are all in this beautiful walnut um, style cabinet. And it took me almost a month. This job was pretty huge. And what happened was she had somebody refinish, or actually the people who made the doors, um, they had someone they said would be able to finish the doors. And so they went ahead and did that and they actually ended up not really getting enough of a finish. It was very misted finish. And what happened was all of her cabinets started to turn white, which was moisture issues. And here in Windsor Essex, we're really, really humid. Just come back to me here for a second and I'm gonna put this guy in here, slide it up into place. 
and I can see where it needs to go just looking at the inside here just a little bit further and then we're going to take away this excess glue just pop that back in there and then I'll wipe some of it away as well And this, I've just filled the screw hole here to be able to get a better mount next time because it's ripped right out of there. So I'm just going to take off the excess there. Now we've got that one all glued up. And you can see if it's nice and flat, and I can see. So that looks good. So we can move on to the other one. All right, so like I was saying, she had her builders um, contract out the finishing and he didn't put enough finish on. And so she decided to, um, after trying to fight with them to redo it and they wouldn't do it, um, she decided to contact me and have all of the cabinets refinished because they're absolutely, as you can see from this, from the pictures here, they're absolutely beautiful, gorgeous cabinets. And the actual construction of the cabinets, really excellent work. But the finish really let everything down. And some of you builders out there know that if you can't get your finish straight, your work looks kind of crappy. It's a really important part of, of the building and producing product is having a really good finisher and a lot of the people I work with here in Windsor, Essex are so thankful to have that partnership and I'm thankful for them because having a good wood mill and a good builder is part of the success of my job too. So we refinished everything, took everything in the shop, refinished every single door, went in the house, refinished all of the trim work we couldn't take out and uh, basically just did a whole refinish on the kitchen after it was only a few years old, which was frustrating, but to have the kitchen look the way it was supposed to look, it was necessary. Okay, we've got them all glued up. They're good there. Now, last week on my big video about bleaching the set, I did uh, a little bit of a review on these lights. And guess what? It turns out that I'm not the very bright one in this case. I was saying this light wasn't very bright, but it's me who's not very bright because <laughs> I didn't use it properly. And a couple of you have these lights, so you're like, uh, you just need to hold it longer. So let me repair this. So you turn it on, hold it on for your laser. And there's my laser on a little green block there. So Meow Meow really likes this, as I call her, Shop Cat. She's been having the most fun with this laser, way more than me. And so to switch it to flashlight mode, I turned it over this way and I was like, gee, that's not very bright. <laughs> and so you just hold it down and you can switch between varying light brightness. Now the brightest one is pretty darn bright. So this is a great flashlight and it's very bright. So these are pretty cute. I'm going to put the code in the um, description of my video again. I'm just going to hold this to turn it back off. So these two guys, again, this little safety light they sent me, good for not dying when you're riding your horse or when you need on your bike or something like that. So I'll pop these two on the coupon code in my description below the video and you can check out, they've got pen lights, they've got lots of different safety lights, lots of different laser type addition, additional stuff that you can check out there and they seem like a pretty good product and they're no battery. So you don't have to find the batteries for your flashlight when the power goes out. Just have to make sure they're charged. So, and they do hold a charge for quite a long time. Anyways, sorry Olight, but here we go. I finally figured out how to use it. Maybe I should read the instructions next time. <laughs> it's not my style. Anyways, so check out in the description if you wanna grab these for a discount. So 
we've got that in the works. It's gonna need to sit overnight and we'll finish that up tomorrow. And now I want to uh, go sit down and talk to you guys about something really serious. Okay, so when I moved to Windsor, Essex 10 years ago in Canada here, um, I moved from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, where my family is, and we moved um, in 2013 when uh, Windsor, Essex was pretty low in the housing mar market, houses were cheap. We were able to get rid of our student loans and debt when we moved here and bought a, a house because ours sold for a lot and it was cheap here, so it was a really um, smart move in that way. And when I was in Saskatchewan, I was working with my dad but also had a teaching degree and was substitute teaching in the wood shops and the mechanics shops in the high schools and working a little bit with the apprenticeship programs for uh, kids who wanna go into the trades. And it was really great. So we moved here to Ontario. I had to wait for the province of Ontario to change over my uh, certificate of teaching. And it took them a very long time. In fact, you would think I moved to like Rwanda or something. It took them that long to figure out what I was allowed to teach here. And in the end, because Ontario is different than Saskatchewan in Canada, um, I was only really allowed to teach construction technology, which was like building houses and framing. And that's not really what I do. So a little dis disheartened with that, I started um, fixing furniture in my garage because it was something that that's what I had done my whole life. It was easy for me. I just threw an ad up on Kijiji and my garage was full in three weeks. I had to find a space and had my little logo made and had everything set up. And I started in a shared space with a concrete um, artist, I guess. So I had a little shop there for about um, two, three years, something like that. I don't remember how long. I had been work doing some work for a cabinet builder in the area and he actually had bought a building right across the street and he invited me to a bay, which was a nice, um, you know, 1500 square foot bay with a garage door and everything. So I actually moved everything across the street. We like pretty much just picked it up and waltzed over except for a couple of things. And, uh, started start a shop there and I was there in in Walkerville in Windsor for seven years and I did some amazing work there um, that's actually when I did the job for my customer with the cabinet door that we're fixing here and uh, just a wonderful seven years of being in the downtown district of artists and really old historic homes and beautiful jobs coming in from historic places and I always knew I kind of wanted to get out of the leasing business and have my own space, my own shop. And so after seven years, we had found a house and we moved out to the county and I had my horse out here and, and uh, everything worked out. And I built this beautiful shop that I'm in now. And it was such a blessing. And we, we got here just before the pandemic hit. So three years ago, pretty much 2019, January, we popped in here and we, you know, right before the pandemic hit and I was so happy to be on my own property in the country, away from the city, away from just everything that was happening in the world. Everybody has their own stories with that. And uh, I didn't have to shut down. I didn't have um, any trouble with work. I had a lot of backlog. So I just kind of worked and kept to myself and really enjoyed the blessing of this beautiful shop as I have continued to do for those three years. But guess what? I'm moving. <laughs> if you can believe it, three shops in Windsor, not, in, not including the one I started in my garage, and I am now picking up and moving all the way back home to Saskatchewan. <laughs> it is crazy. I started thinking about this maybe a year ago, like, oh, I miss my family. I want to go home. I want to be with my dad. I want to work with him before he retires. And he was thinking about getting out of the business and there was a whole bunch of legal and weird stuff going on with him trying to sell it. And all of a sudden it just made total sense. And this was only about two months ago. It made total sense for me to just go home and take over his business and continue this work at home with my family, with my dad and um, enjoy being with them again and close to everyone. And my daughter being with her cousins and grandma and they're all best friends. And it's just such a great, 
uh, thing to have back in my life. So we have at this point, point sold our house, bought another one in Saskatchewan. Um, I am, and you'll notice, not right now, but eventually the shop's gonna be clearing out and we are gonna be picking up, driving all the way down there with all our stuff or sending it or not quite 100% sure on that and moving it all down to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan to be back home with my family and to continue this beautiful career in this job in my fourth shop and we are going to be building a whole new shop and I'm going to take you along with that of course I'll take you along with this whole process it's already a few months in and I'm just keeping secrets from you but eventually I was like I'm going to tell him so yeah this is what we're doing so my beautiful shop that I have built and loved so much and everything in here, my spray booth and all that stuff that I've built and put my heart into, <laughs> I'm just going to say goodbye. And I'm gonna build a whole new space and you know, do a few things that I didn't do on this one that I thought you know, I should have, you know, I get a second chance. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. So the first couple of months or maybe longer, I'm not sure how long it's gonna to take to build the shop, I'm going to be working and finishing up the work that my dad has in his current location now. So I will take you and we're headed back to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan to fix the furniture out there and uh, spend some time with my family. So thanks for listening to this giant long rant of my life, but there'll be more to come. Anyways, let's, uh, I guess we're just going to wait for that cabinet door to um, get well, I'm going to leave it overnight so it's nice and hard, and then we'll redrill those holes and uh, clean it up, and it'll be done. But I hope you've enjoyed this little update on my life and this little repair and all the stuff that we went through in this video. I know it wasn't normal video, but um, hopefully you will enjoy this journey with me. So thanks so much for listening, and I'll get back to you when, uh, tomorrow when those are, when that door is dry. All of the clamps are dry, so let's get them off here. Okay, so we've got the clamps off, and we do have a little bit of glue cleanup, especially on this splinter here. So I'm going to grab a really sharp chisel, and we'll chisel that nice and smooth. You could wash this with Varsol too, but you still have a little bit of epoxy to get off. So I'm just doing it all in one. Looks pretty good. Just a little bit more of the epoxy. And this epoxy does flake off nicely if there's a finish underneath it. You just gotta get right underneath it there. Good, so I'm just gonna grab some epoxy and a scotch brite and scrub that, or some Varsol and a scotch brite and scrub that. go that's that repair there and I will seal it with a little bit of um, spray bomb lacquer this one has a little bit less glue squeeze out so we're just gonna pop off the tape and give this one a little scrub as well good stuff so I'm going to drill out these again with a very small drill bit, so let me grab that. Just so that there's a pilot to go in, and then this one as well. Okay, last thing is just a little spritz with uh, satin lacquer just to seal that area up again. There. And that is it. All done.
So that'll dry to a nice satin sheen. So thanks for joining me for this quick little repair, guys. And I hope it was helpful if you have something like this in the future. Thanks for listening to me about my exciting news. And we'll see you on the next project. Cheers.